The story that I was investigating for over two years involved the gang rape of more than 50 little girls aged 11 months to 18 years old uh, in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo in a particular village named Kavumu. And what was happening was, one by one, the girls were being kidnapped from their houses during the middle of the night, taken to a nearby field, um, gang raped, and left there to be found by their families bleeding. So over the course of all this time, there had been no investigation going on, um, and everyone uh, was terrified in the town, and the attacks weren't stopping. So I wrote one story from New York, uh, but as I kept following it, I wanted to know why there was no investigation, why justice was so far from, from happening. And I went to the Democratic Republic of Congo, um, funded by the Women's Media Center, to do a long-form story for The Guardian. And in the course of the weeks I was there, it, it didn't really take long for me to, to form in my mind um, who the perpetrator was. And in fact, it was a member of parliament. And I surmise that he had created a kind of local militia and that there was some sort of sorcery thinking involved, that um, raping little girls, it's not an uncommon belief in that part of the world, can give you um, virgin blood, which will make you impervious to bullets in battle. So there had been um, a plantation that these men were squatting on, the murder of the German plantation owner. I mean, there was intrigue everywhere and a lot of violence everywhere you looked. Early on, uh, there were a lot of ethical hurdles to consider. I had to think about the safety of everyone involved in this story, you know, not just the tiny little girls I spoke to and their families, but um, the investigators I spoke to, the NGO workers, the doctors, the, the lawyers, I mean, people who had their lives at risk just by looking into what was happening here. And I really think that that's also why this story was taking so long to kind of make it through the justice system. People were terrified. So there was also the aspect of ethically, you know, how to not re-traumatize these little girls as I interviewed them. But that, of course, is just, you know, a necessary kind of thinking when you do a story about rape. Um, the biggest hurdles came along when I got in touch with one of the investigators on the case, when there finally was an investigation going on. And he, you know, th there was no money given to the case. It was really just, you know, a very tiny investigation, but, but someone was working really hard on it. Um, so someone told me that the arrests actually were going to take place in the next couple weeks and hopefully while I was still in Congo. So I waited and, and he asked that I not publish my long form piece until the arrest took place in order not to jeopardize the investigation, which I totally agreed with because the last thing I wanted was to ruin, you know, the chance for these little girls to, to find justice, to, to stop these rapes. So I went back to New York and I wrote my long form piece and I waited. And uh, a month went by, two months, and finally five months. And I wasn't sleeping at this point. I was thinking every night, you know, what do I do? How can this keep going? And former little girls had been kidnapped and gang raped in that time. So finally, you know, I realized one night that, that I could do something. And I spoke with my editors um, about the idea of writing an op-ed before publishing the other story. And what I would write in it was not, you know, name names, not name who the suspected perpetrator was, but basically flat out say to the government of Congo, I know who's doing this, and I know you know who's doing this, so if you don't go ahead and take some action, I'm going to reveal who I believe the suspect is, and it's going to make you look really bad. You know, and I figured I would get kind of a slap on the wrist, kind of nasty statement from the government would come out. And instead, um, four hours later, the arrest warrants were issued after three years. And 12 hours later, this member of parliament and 67 of his militiamen were in custody. I believe in journalism for the public good. And um, nothing has made me believe in it more strongly than this story. You know, it was a frightening story to do. There was murder, rape, and militia. Um, I was detained by the Congolese intelligence services for a day. Um, you know, everything that you could throw into a story to make it risky was basically there. Um, but in the end, it was clearly worth it. There was action taken, action that may not have been taken if I hadn't gone ahead and done this. So I really believe 
that this uh, kind of work is crucial, that international journalism has a serious role to play in human rights and in finding justice.